morning, everyone. Happy Monday to you. I have had a doozy of a weekend. If you are new here, I am a wedding photographer. That is my full-time job. And this time of year, we're really busy. So I had a wedding on Friday, then another one on Saturday, and then a bunch of family shoots on Sunday. As if that wasn't stressful enough, the end of the day yesterday, my poor little Levi started having some crazy stomach pains and I won't get into the TMI of it, but Dan had to take him to the emergency room. I was very stressed. I stayed home with Lincoln, Dan took Levi. He is okay, he just is having some, some GI issues that we will be able to easily resolve. He had a doctor's appointment a few weeks ago and he's on iron medicine and it's just doing really terrible things to his stomach. So he's okay, but my mama heart is not. I was a broken mess. And the reason that I'm telling you this is because it's gonna give me the opportunity to kind of talk to you guys about stress eating and how that is still a huge crutch for me and I think many others. So my face is super swollen, my eyes are swollen from crying, and I ate like a freaking raccoon in a dumpster last night while Dan was at the ER with Levi. I gave in to my stress, I ate a bunch of garbage, and today I am ponying up and getting back to my regularly scheduled program. I basically just let the stress of the weekend spiral, and Levi going to the ER was just the icing on the cake, so I did not eat my best last night at all. I'm feeling it today, uh, but I wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you guys about emotional eating and sometimes we do our best to make sure that we can manage the stress well and sometimes we give in to temptation and do whatever we can to take ourselves out of the anxiety for the moment and I did that yesterday. So always want to be transparent and honest with you guys. I don't tell you every single thing that I put into my mouth because that's really excessive and you know I, there's a difference between accountability and also feeling like you know too much information. So I'm a little disappointed in myself. You know I had two weddings in a row and I ate really well for both of them and then yesterday I just I gave into the stress. I gave into the stress. So I'm at the chiropractor right now for my adjustment, then I'm going to run a couple errands and I am going to go home and sit down and talk to you guys about some of the ways that you can manage stress without eating. <laughs> and also just to kind of tell you that if stress does get the best of you and you have a bad day with food, that's okay too. That's definitely okay too. Nobody's perfect. I love you guys. First, let's kind of define emotional eating, what it is and why we all do it. Emotional eating is exactly what it sounds like. You're eating based on your emotions and not necessarily on hunger and using food as fuel. So celebration, you're happy you have some cake. You had a great day, let's celebrate, let's have a special meal. You had a terrible day. I'm gonna eat to make myself feel better and make my day seem less terrible. These are all examples of emotional eating. Now, I'm not saying don't celebrate with the cake. The celebratory emotional eating is not usually as toxic. Now it is for some people and people that are food addicts can be easily triggered. They have that piece of cake and that celebratory meal and before you know it, they're on the rock and roller coaster of eating everything in sight for days on end. That is a little different. What I had last night, I consider a binge. I overate, I ate a lot of food that I wouldn't normally eat, and basically I was eating my stress. I felt stressed and I felt worried and a lot of out of control feelings. And instead of kind of having a conversation with myself and talking myself back down to earth, I filled that void and that stress with food. This has been a crutch of mine for my entire life. So 
I get a lot of messages and a lot of beautiful comments about you guys saying that I'm your keto superhero and you know all of these amazing beautiful words that really do inspire me but I don't ever want you to think that every day looks perfect for me I still fall into my old habits and my old patterns sometimes I've been able to get back on board and maintain my weight loss because it is something that is really important to me I also want to deal with more of those emotions and handle them emotionally instead of filling the void with food or alcohol or whatever it is that is your vice when you are stressed. So how not to emotional eat? <laughs> I don't have an easy answer. I really don't. What I will tell you is that keeping busy and occupying yourself with something positive in that moment where you feel like you want to binge, that's really helpful. So last night, for example, if I would have chosen to maybe read a book or do some work on the computer or maybe do like an exercise video in my living room, I probably would have been able to ward off the binge that I had, but I didn't make that choice. We are all adults. We can make endless choices in our own lives, I made the choice to give in. And I'm not beating myself up today. Like, yeah, I feel like crap and that sucks. But I'm also forgiving myself for having a weak moment and getting back to business today. So if you are an emotional eater and you are someone that tends to cope with stress by eating comforting foods, I really hope that this makes you feel a little bit better to know that even people that have it together most of the time do still backpedal and have those moments. I have those moments. I wish that I was more of like an alcohol drinker because I think if I would have made myself have a glass of wine or a little cocktail that maybe that would have taken the edge off for me, but I didn't do that. So <laughs> tip number one, maybe have yourself a low carb glass of alcohol to take the edge off. If you're someone who can't just stop at one, that's probably not the best advice either. But if you are someone who can have a little glass of wine or a little, you know, mixed drink that's sugar free and that can kind of help distract you from eating, then great. That's an awesome thing to do. Drinking water and getting really hydrated is another really good way to kind of keep yourself in line. If I would have made this like big beautiful glass of water with ice and maybe a little water enhancer some lemons and made it kind of fancy i probably would have been so hydrated that food wasn't as much of an issue after working a couple of really long days i have to hydrate more than normal and i didn't do that yesterday and i feel like that also may have triggered my feelings to eat like crap and to binge I'm not trying to make excuses for myself. Like I said, I made the choice, but I just want you to know that if you are going through something and you make a bad choice, I'm still here for you. I'm willing to bet that everyone in our little community is also still here for you. Don't beat yourself up about it. Dust yourself off, shake it off sister or brother, and keep it moving. I am back to business today. All I've had so far is black coffee. I'm probably going to do a meal replacement shake for lunch. Then I'll do some scrambled eggs for late lunch. And then for dinner, I'm going to have something very filling, probably some kind of beef and salad or something along those lines, maybe like a taco salad. So I will be eating clean like that, clean-ish keto all week. And that will help me get all the cravings out of my system and get me back to feeling my absolute best. That's my plan of attack. So if you've ever been in this situation and you've taken the route of kind of verbally abusing yourself, I am here to tell you how damaging that is. You are only human. We are all only human. No one can do everything perfect all the time and that is absolutely okay. We are designed that way. We are designed to not do everything perfect every single day. So Love yourself, forgive yourself a little bit, shake it off, it is fine. Weight loss is not the most important thing in the world for anybody, okay? The main reason that I even eat keto and why I've stuck to it this long is my myriad of other issues and complaints that I have that are unrelated to weight loss. So yes, I am a couple pounds up on the scale right now. 
no, I am not stressing about it. What I am more concerned about is that I feel swollen, I feel tired, my sinuses are really congested. So all of those other symptoms come back immediately when I introduce a lot of sugar and heavy, crappy, processed food into my diet. So it's just a reminder to dust it off because that's what makes you feel better. And I'm gonna try really hard not to beat myself up about having a little bit of a slip. It happens, it happens to everybody. So I love you guys so much. Thank you for always being a really great sounding board for me to talk about my strengths and my weaknesses, my struggles with life and my family. I'm just, I'm so grateful for all of your friendships. It just really, it really is a very special thing for me. If you struggle with emotional eating and that is something that you are trying to tackle, I'd really like to know what you do when you feel a binge coming or your former reckless food self creeping in to kind of sabotage your day. What do you guys do? What's something that you do that can snap you out of it and get you back centered and focused? I really want to know. So I hope you'll comment down below and tell me how you power through. Send me a little love. Don't be too hard on me, please. I don't need to, <laughs> I don't need to upload this video and then read comments of like, how could you, you disappointed us because that hurts my feelings and I, I don't deserve that. I had, I had a weak moment. And if you had one too this weekend, let's rally together and get our crap back together. I am so down to do it as a team. I love you guys so much. Thank you for always being here for me. I will always be here for you in the best of my capacity. We'll see you guys as soon as humanly possible.